sixty percent of the lamb that we consume here in the United States is actually imported, which doesn't make sense since lamb is being raised in every state across our country. It doesn't have to be a special occasion dish. It's easier than you think, and it can be something easy to whip up on a weeknight. And by doing so, you're supporting American farmers and ranchers. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ashton Garrett. Uh, thank you for that great sponsor and ad. When you menu local lamb, you are supporting the nation's shepherds and their families. Call out fresh, homegrown local lamb on your menus. Welcome. Again, my name is Ashton Garrett. I'm beyond elated to moderate this tremendous presentation. And now I'm thrilled to introduce a great supporter of all student culinarians. Please welcome Jennifer. Thank you, Ashton. Uh, we are so excited to host this excellent webinar in partnership with the American Culinary Federation. Welcome to all of our pro -star educators from around the country. So exciting. Um, we really hope that you enjoy this topic. We know it's a really interesting and popular topic with our, our pro -star students and educators. So we're going to get right to it. I'm going to toss it right over to Jackie. Well, thanks, Jen, and thank you so much to Massachusetts Pro Start to, uh, for inviting us back. We certainly appreciate all of you tuning in from across the country as we focus on food trucks and food truck chefs. Um, and um, now more than ever, it's important for culinarians to connect, to share, and to offer inspiration and mentorship, which is exactly why we wanted to be here just for you, the future leaders of the food service industry. Before we begin, as a note, we will be taking questions from you, the viewers, as we are able. Please use the chat function to collaborate with other viewers and the Q&A function to pose questions to the chefs. So let's start the conversation now. In the chat, please let us know what your favorite foods or dishes are that you usually order from a food truck. I'm Jackie Pressinger, American Culinary Federation's Director of Strategic Partnerships. I'm honored to introduce our chef moderator today, a friend, a colleague, and a very talented young culinarian. Chef Ashton Garrett is the president of the ACF Young Chefs Club, which includes all ACF members under the age of 25. He's also the USA's Young Chefs Ambassador to the World Association of Chef Societies and has earned his associates and bachelor's degrees from Johnson Wales University. He's a Pro Start program alumni and currently works as senior culinary manager at the Marriott in Cleveland, Ohio. I could go on and on about him. I'm very proud of him and all of his accomplishments, but at this time, I'll pass it over to Chef Ashton to let you know a little bit more about himself. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here and I'm extremely honored to be in such great company with so many different chefs. Um, and uh, a little bit more about myself, as Jackie mentioned, uh, I'm currently a, a supervisor working at the Marriott International. Um, I've been able to travel around the world um, and just cook and, and learn about the great cuisines. Um, and uh, more recently, I was a uh, Guys Grocery Games Food Network competitor and winner. And that has just brought a tremendous amount of, of passion and success into my life. And I'm very honored uh, to be here. So um, we have a great presentation for you all today. Um, we'll be discussing the business of food trucks and how that correlates into the business spectrum today. Um, I would like to just ask every chef presenter um, to just, in just introduce themselves, give a little bit of background, and we'll get right into the conversation. So starting with Chef Jenny, um, if you wouldn't mind just going ahead and uh, saying some few things about yourself, and, and we'll move forward. Hi, everybody. I'm Chef Jenny Castor. I'm from Fort Worth, Texas, the best Texas city in Texas. So if you come to Fort Worth, don't go to Dallas. Or, yeah, just don't go there. Come to Fort Worth. Anyway, I am a former culinary um, school instructor here in Fort Worth. And now I own Lucky Bee Kitchen, um, whose birthday is April 1st, five years old, which is a huge, huge accomplishment for a food truck because um, it's kind of a hump to get over even three years. It's, it's a very... Um, it's a very difficult uh, business to be in, but it's picking up and I love um, what I do. Um, I um, have three children. They're all in college. Actually, one's out of college, but I have three kids, um, a ton of animals, and I love to cook everything, which we're going to talk more about that later um, when we talk about food truck menus and some of the options that you guys can do if this is something you want to pursue. So thank you for having me, and I can't wait to hear about all your questions and I'm having fun reading all the favorite foods you guys like to order off of food trucks. 
Thank you, Chef Jenny. I'm moving forward. Uh, Chef Marshall, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Thank you, Ashton. I'm uh, Marshall Shafkowitz, the Executive Director of Brightwater, a center for the study of food uh, here in Northwest Arkansas, specifically in Bentonville. And uh, food trucks are actually such an incredible hot topic. We teach students how to use them. Uh, they use them in two of our classes. And uh, we have just such a great time traveling Northwest Arkansas and even down towards Little Rock. We love it up here in the north side of the state. Uh, and having our students experience what it is to work, plan, create, develop inside a mobile kitchen. Uh, check us out at www.brightwater.edu uh, to see what we're all about. Thank you for that, Chef Marshall. And last but certainly not least, uh, Chef Daniel, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself, please. Hello, my name is Daniel Bloom, and uh, I am a jack of all trades, if you will. I went to the Culinary Institute of America quite a while ago now, but that's okay. Jackie Pressinger actually was the recruiter for me. And over the years, I have worked fine dining. I've done R&D for candy companies. I was a chocolatier in St. Lucia. I've worked all over the Eastern seaboard. And uh, when it came down to it, I wanted a way to express myself and have fun. And the food truck definitely seemed like the best route for me. So I'm excited uh, to discuss what I do with my business and uh, I'm a little surprised nobody said pizza was their favorite food, but I won't, I won't hold that against anyone. And uh, I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you for that, Chef. As you all can see, we have a plethora of experience um, and, and success on this webinar call and I'm extremely excited um, to get started. So I urge all of you, if you have questions, please feel free to use the chat. Um, button um, within the webinar and uh, Chef Jackie will bring those out and uh, throughout the conversation and we'll try to get those out to our panelists as, as many as possible. So beginning with the conversation, um, I'd like to start with Chef Jenny um, and just Chef, you know, why did you decide to become a food truck uh, chef? You know, what, what was it about food trucks that really drew you to this industry? Well, if I'm being perfectly honest, it kind of um, I kind of have upon, happened upon it by accident. Um, after being a culinary instructor for a while, I had kind of, I mean, I'm not like young, right? So I'm, I'm kind of feeling clock ticking and I decided I wanted to pursue something on my own. Um, so long story short, I had actually put in um, a down, well, not a down payment, but a an interest into a leasing spot for a small um, restaurant that I wanted just about 10 tables, something very intimate. And I was competing against another um, tenant who also wanted the space. Um, they wanted more of the space than I did. And when it came down to it, they won the battle. Um, and I was so, so um, disappointed. And a week later, I bought a food truck because <laughs> I had written my business plan. I had all these ideas. I was just chomping at the bit. Um, and I, like a week later, I got online, I found a food truck, um, purchased it and had it built out because I didn't really want to do food truck food, but I wanted to do the food I wanted to do off a truck. So I don't know if that makes sense, but there's a difference there. Um, so that's kind of how my whole concept evolved. And I am just so glad. I think it's it's the best spot I could be in right now for what I want to do. That's wonderful, Chef. Thank you for that. Um, Chef Marshall, if you wouldn't mind saying how you got your kind of start. Um, and and uh, if you would talk about from a culinary teaching aspect, um, the, maybe the main differences between uh, owning a food truck and operating versus a restaurant. Uh, well, you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest difference, uh, truthfully, uh, Ashton, that everybody has to think about is you're now on wheels. And that brings a whole different set of challenges, rules, regulations that you don't think about when you're inside a brick and mortar building. Uh, 
you know, when we're when we're in brick and mortar restaurants and, and I see Chef Jenny shaking her head going, yep. <laughs> and and I'm sure Chef Bloom is doing the same thing. I just can't see him on my screen. When we start to talk to students about when they want to go into this business and, and I now we get the food truck hand that comes up five, six years ago. Nobody thought about that. It was uh, so. So Jenny, congratulations, Nelson, uh, Daniel, congratulations on where you are uh, in your businesses because you've overcome hurdles. Today, food trucks are the big thing. So when we start to talk about it, we get the students to really think about the first part, which is the hardest part for every chef to do, and that's come up with a business plan because you have to know the business side of it. You can be the greatest chef in the world, but if you can't add and you can't keep track of your books, uh, there's a good chance that you're not going to be around much longer. So we start with business planning and getting the student and or professional, because we do consult with some professionals, to get that business plan squared away. We go over it with them, try and get them to start to think simply, what can you do on, a, on an 18-foot truck or a 10-foot trailer or a 5-foot trailer? What can actually be achieved? And then we continue the conversation from there. What are your local municipality codes? Can, you, can your propane be under your truck? There's, a, there's an interesting question. Can it be under your truck or does it have to be exposed? So we have to educate on all the nuances and not just the nuances of where we live, where this person is thinking about it. Where we take it a step further than I think some of our, some of our other schools do is we love to help the students get in front of micro lenders because that's where the money hits the road. Can you sell it to somebody who's gonna invest in you? So we'll teach those students that aspect as well because if you can't pitch it and you can't get the money, you can't start. Wow, thank you, Chef. Uh, that was a tremendous answer. Thank you so much. Um, as well as you, you Chef Jenny, thank you for, for your enlightened answer. And Chef, Chef Daniel, um, what, why, you know, you have a multitude of experience in, in, uh, in different um, pathways, I should suggest. And what made you want to stumble across the food truck? Well, um, as the other panelists uh, happen to say, I sort of fumbled into it, if you will. I had been running a restaurant, fine dining on Hilton Head Island, and we had a horrible hurricane come through. At about that time, my mom was having some health issues in Florida. I came back and I was actually running a brewery. I have a brewing background as well. And uh, one of my food trucks had to go out of business and I started talking to them and I was like, my primary background is cooking. That's what I enjoy doing. This could be an opportunity. And it was a very small trailer. It was actually basically an oven on a single axle. And I set a tin up in front of it, a tin up behind it. I had to transport all the food on ice, everything. It was a pain, but after year, year and a half of keeping my head down, I was able to upgrade into my new beautiful trailer that I absolutely love. I mean, right now it's 40 degrees out, but I don't feel it because I have a heater. Love that. Didn't have that before. But it was basically one of those things where I have done a lot of different things. I've worked the long hours for the Ritz Carlton. I've worked in quit service with Spike Mendelson. I've, I've been fortunate to work with a lot of different people and when it came down to it, I thought about what my own family used to tell me, which is if you're not building your own dream, you're building somebody else's. And I didn't like that if I wanted to volunteer and do something in the community, or if I wanted to help out with an individual's project, that I couldn't do it unless I had someone else's permission. That was a big thing for me. I didn't like that I couldn't put something out unless X, Y, and C approved of it. Does it meet this standard? Does it have this qualification? And for me, that was just, I don't want to say disheartening, but when you look at culinary school, I mean, before I even went to the CIA, 
I wanted to know this was the industry for me. I worked for, I think, two or three years before going to culinary school because that's a big, it's a big, big decision. A lot of debt can come from that. And that being said, once I built up to this, I mean, now if I want to do anything, I get to do it. The best part about owning this food truck is I'm able to go wherever. Today I'm actually set up because I'm gonna be working on a farm, doing a meal later. And earlier I had some cows walk by me and it's just like, well, that's not something you have every day. Every day I go wherever there's opportunity. And that's not something you can do in a brick and mortar. You meet new people, you can customize menus for them. You can change your menu names for them it can be confusing for your employees but either way it's easy enough to do and some of the other things i mean for me i do toys for tots with marines i've raised a lot i have worked with special olympics i've been able to do make a wish events and that is amazing that, that brings something to the table for me that I didn't have before. Wow, thank you, Chef. Thank you. Um, and sending it back to the Chef Marshall um, real quickly, um, what are some of the, the biggest challenges um, that you've seen, maybe from a personal experiences as well as it, some of your students um, as you, you know, teach them that you see um, them starting out with? And then um, I also like to ask Chef Jenny that same question and ask her from a more personal standpoint, what uh, mistakes have you probably made um, on the early onset of starting your business and the challenges that you've endured as well? I, no, I, actually, Jenny, you, Chef, you go first, um, because I wanna relate that back to what we do in the classroom with students, okay. uh, and also some of my personal experiences with our food truck. Not a problem. Chef Jenny? Gosh, I don't think, I don't think this program's long enough to tell you all the mistakes. I, mean, I just screwed up the other day. I do it every day. Um, part of the concept of my food truck is that I change the menu daily. Um, I chose to do that because I kind of touched on that earlier about I just I just love to cook everything. I'm not great at cooking everything by any means, but I'm not afraid to try. Um, and I've taught um, all levels of culinary school, so I just think it's a great way for you, the audience, not to get bored, and myself not to get bored, and that's what I tell my um, clients is that's why I change my menu every day. It's exciting to me. Some things are excellent. Some things are like, why did I do this? I can't wait till this service is over. Why did I put 10 moving parts? You know, so um, I would say as my five years has, has evolved, that is one of the things that I have learned. I knew that because I chose this point of view, that there were going to be challenges because people like, you know, typically I like, like I've seen tacos, hamburgers, pizza, all those things. Um, and so sometimes when you're walking up to a truck like mine, um, it's called Lucky Bee Kitchen and I intended to run it that way as a kitchen. Um, people don't know quite what to expect. So they kind of have to earn um, or learn to trust me um, for my cooking. So I've had to earn a reputation that I can cook, first of all, and then they can trust to walk up and say, you know what, I'm going to order that. I have pretty good faith that that's probably going to be good or don't order that. That's going to suck, you know? Um, so some of my biggest challenges I would say is um, trying to make something very amazing out of very few ingredients. So kind of a rule that um, I give myself is um, it has to have you know, five or less ingredients. It has to get out of the window in less than six minutes. I, I will not let people wait 15, 20 minutes for their food. I absolutely have something in me that just will not allow that. Um, and it has to taste good and it has to look beautiful. So if I cannot create something that checks all those marks, um, somewhere it's gonna fall down. Either I'm gonna be disappointed in, in my food, which is gonna reflect um, in my service, or my, my um, customers are gonna be dissatisfied. So that's definitely something that I have learned to do. Um, I've had to work on paring my costs down. I like all these like 
really fun, cool ingredients. And I want that to be unexpected um, off my truck. But at the same time, I have to be smart. So I've had to learn to play to, the, to, to my audience. Um, that's one of the great things about what I do is, for instance, you know, next weekend, I'm just a dessert truck. Um, last weekend, I did a four course wine dinner. So all those things are in my spectrum, but I have to know where I'm going and what my audience is gonna be before I decide what my menu is gonna be. Um, I obviously, not to be, you know, I'm obviously not going to go serve bone marrow to a bunch of elementary kids at, you know, Dale Bourne Elementary. So that's an extreme example, but that gives you an idea. So people have learned that about the truck that I have a lot of um, diversity and um, that's been a big benefit to me. But along the way, I've really, really messed up a lot starting out with trying to do too much. So you need to keep um, your menu simple do a few things really, really well, not a bunch of things that are subpar. So that, I mean, I can go on for a long time, but that would probably be the basis um, of, of my point of view and what I've learned and, and everything kind of spins off of that. Not to mention forgetting to fill your propane and check in your, <laughs> forgetting to put oil in your truck, replace the engine two times, you know, stuff like that. But um, that's a whole different topic, so. Wow. Chef Jenny, thank you for that. You made an interesting point in, um, in using the word simple. I think, you know, sometimes, you know, cuisine can often get misconstrued by um, you know, adding so much more to, you know, try to enhance the dish or the flavor or the just the overall profile. But, you know, that, that old school saying that, you know, simple is always best. And, you know, um, you know and, and sometimes, you know, you just need to let the ingredients speak for themselves. So thank you for that. Um, Chef Marshall, if you wouldn't mind weighing in on, on, that, uh, on that question. So very, very uh, specifically, I wanted Chef Jenny to go first on that because hearing it from me, um, it, it's not going to carry the same weight as hearing it from Chef Jenny or Chef Daniel who have gone through it. But what she said is so key. Keep it simple. Um, the more complex you make your menus, the more steps that you have to put into getting a dish out, um, it's different inside a food truck because you have limited space and you may only have limited cooking utensils. You may be on a truck with just a flat top and hopefully a fryer later. Um, if you're lucky, you might not have a six burner range. You might not have an induction top. So you have to start to think about your menu based on the equipment that you have and what you can actually execute in a timely manner. I mean, I love the six minute comment that Chef Jenny just talked about um, you know, and that's something we talk to students about all the time. Um, I'm actually helping right now a um, Marshallese chef. Uh, and this is, she's the first professional Marshallese chef I have ever met, open up a food truck in Springdale, Arkansas. And uh, this will be the first uh, business licensed Marshallese restaurant in the region. And we have uh, some of the largest Marshallese population in the U.S. here in Arkansas. And, you know, her and I were going through the tasting and we were watching every step she made. And it was 15 steps to get a dish out. And we time out, stop. OK, let's cut this down. Let's simplify it. Let's be true and authentic to your ingredients. Let's be true and authentic to your culture because it's very specific. It's Marshallese. And that revamped, just that, that conversation revamped her whole menu for us to go back in the truck, keeping it simple. Um, and the way that we approached it with her, uh, and, and her name is Chef Judy Tadios, so you can check her out on Facebook she's, or Instagram, is um, to really start to think about the simplicity of food that can be prep intensive but easy execution. And then look at items when you start to uh, think about this. It's Judy Tatios, T-A-T-I-O-S, just saw the question pop up. Um, once we start getting into this prep intensive piece, look at items that you can share across multiple dishes. Uh, you know, We're using a plantain cake that is the basis of almost every every entree that she has as the starch for it um, and look at cross utilization of product 
look at simplicity. I, I, I've loved going back to Jenny and I'm sure Chef Daniel has these, has these thoughts too. Highlight a single or two ingredients uh, on a dish. So you pare down those costs because when everybody comes in, especially young chefs, I wanna have 35 flavors on a plate and mess with people's tongue because I think <laughs> I'm getting too umami. Uh, simple, two, three, four ingredients. The, the greatest skill a chef can have is mastering the use of salt and pepper. And if you can do that, then build a little bit of extra flavor on that. And then if you say you're going to be doing a truck that is a taco truck and it's specifically Michoacan, be authentic to that region. And that's, that's a key to really driving in and bringing in business. Create, create who you are through your food. And, you know, Chef Jenny said it perfectly. Create that reputation. And then people will come to you and try your food and experiment. Then you can start to have fun, truly, truly have fun and introduce new products to people. Chef, thank you so much. Uh, that was a, a tremendous answer. Thank you. Uh, as well as Chef Jenny, thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to ask Jackie. Um, I know we're, we're getting a, a lot of great engagement um, and, a, and a lot of probably you know, great questions. So I'm um, just asked, you know, Chef Daniel, um, probably one of the questions, Jackie, if you, you know, want to want to pick out, choose, choose one from a, a chef or um, a student that I want to ask. So we'll open that up for Chef Daniel. Sure, absolutely. Well, thank you, Ashton. Chef Daniel, um, one of the questions came in is, uh, was regarding how do you find a great spot for your truck um, in order to make the best profits? Well, that's actually a really great question. Um, in my personal experience, nothing is worth turning down. You, you look at all opportunities. And what I mean by that is I do a lot of breweries. For instance, tonight I'll be at a brewery and what goes better than pizza and beer? You know, they get to see where I throw a pie right in the wood fire oven and it's produced for them. That's a big thing. When I look at places, I also look at potential. So if there's a fair or if there's a event happening and there's going to be three or four other food trucks, I need to see one, is there going to be a certain demographic? And by that, I mean, will there be a lot of kids who are going to order my plain cheese pizza? Are there going to be individuals who want to have something fancier? Do I need to produce desserts for the event? I look at a lot of things. Barrel races are really popular where I am. Not too many food trucks are willing to drive out into the middle of a field and watch as people ride horses. My mentality is if there is money to be made, then my window is opening. So essentially, don't think anything is not worth it. Be flexible. Do lunches for that high school that's having a field day, go to the sporting event, go to the local university. I've gone to University of Florida, which isn't far from me, and I've opened my window up for Gator football games. You have to be flexible, and especially in these times when there had been quarantines, when there's been different issues going around the pandemic, you have to be willing to see what can I still do that will allow me to sell my product and essentially pay the bills? Wonderful. Chef, thank you for that. Um, and uh, moving forward uh, with Chef Jenny, I would like to ask you a two-prong question, um, if you will. So first is, how do you market uh, your business um, in terms of a food truck? So is it more social media, word of mouth? I know that you said that you do a lot of different versatility and variations um, in terms of, you know, uh, catering to different, you know, audiences and, and things like that. And, um, I also like to ask, um, what are the COVID-19 measures that you're taking in place right now to ensure that your food is safe and you're taking the proper sanitation methods? And then also parlay that question into Chef Marshall as well. Those are both great questions. Um, 
So as far as marketing myself, um, really I learned investing in somebody to market for you is just a big waste of money. It really doesn't matter. If they don't get to try your food, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we are saturated with food trucks in this market, especially where I live. So the best way to market yourself is to get out there and get your food, um, you know, exposed to everyone. And that's kind of what Chef Daniel was saying. Don't turn anything down. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know how you're going to get um, a relationship formed with that person. If you get one wedding out of sitting at the food park all day long and making no money, well, that just market it yourself. My truck, which I'm on right now, this is Lucky Bee, um, <laughs> kind of like a rolling advertisement, right? So I'm driving down the road, somebody sees my truck, um, maybe they, you know, look me up later. Um, so it may not be the daily grind that gets you the money. It may be more these big events that you're getting to, um, to engage in later. But um, it takes a while. It's like any kind of sales job. It's going to take time. Um, you have to build a clientele. You have to build a reputation. Um, I do use social media. I'm kind of old school, so I'm really bad at like technology. Like I was terrified about the Zoom call. I was like, I'm going to be the <laughs> Thing. And my husband comes in, he's like, did you, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. But um, here we are. So, yay. Um, anyway, I um, do Facebook more often, probably because my demographic tends to be, um, I would say, not that I'm profiling Facebookers, but like, I would say between 28 and 65, 30 and 65 is probably more my demographic for the type of person that eats off my truck. So I really hit hard on, on Facebook. Um, I should do Twitter and Instagram and all that, but guys, I can't keep up. I do all of the, I'm just terrible. Like I'm, I'm even surviving, but sorry. Uh, but to, to be real with you, um, it's just about taking risks. Um, you are going to fail. 10 times before you succeed the one time. And when you do, you could really succeed well. And my events now have grown and they're custom. I very rarely, if ever, just go park somewhere now in hopes to make money. Um, my email box is pretty much full with people just wanting me to be there, which means they want to give me their money and they want to eat my food. So is that not why we're here? That's like ultimate. So. Um, it has taken me a while to get there, but I am there now. So I still um, share things weekly on my page. If it's just something I'm cooking on the truck, if it's a technique, um, if it's an opportunity like this, I get to share it. Um, they just want to know you're active and um, still going. Um, if you somehow lose your relationship with your community, they're going to forget about you. There's a million other food trucks that they could go with. So um, again, that's one of those things we could go on and on about, but we're limited on time, I know. So part of your second question, Chef Ashton, was uh, what measures are being made? So when this pandemic hit um, about a year ago, um, a lot of my big events, my weddings, these things I do every year, just they all canceled. And I thought, oh gosh, this is not good. I mean, like, like in one week I lost probably $12,000 in sales alone just from people canceling events, big parties, weddings, anniversary parties. And I got very worried. Um, and about two weeks went by and all of a sudden I started getting emails. Can you come to our neighborhood? We don't want to leave our house. Um, can you deliver? So at that point, I'm sure Steph Daniel had to do the same thing. We have to, I had to adapt to this new, this new thing, I mean, if you just sit in your old ways, you are going to go down the drain. So I had to learn, okay, I've got to change um, my business plan just a little bit here, and I'm going to go off this, the path, and I'm going to figure this out. So um, that being said, I started visiting these neighborhoods, and people would come out. They would all social distance outside, but I also had to hire a few extra employees. So aside from the person that's in the window, um, I do all the cooking. I won't, I'm like so, um, what's the word? Control. OCD. Yeah. <laughs> um, I like <laughs> but I always have some in the window. But then I also had someone outside of my window so that I created a drive through concept for the truck. So um, I'm in here cooking, someone's taking an order, and then I have a third person out there with gloves and masks taking the food to their car. 
So obviously we're wearing face masks. Um, we are wearing gloves, changing gloves, just one pair of gloves all day long is y'all know better does not do a pair. Change your gloves. If you're going to wear gloves, change them or wash your hands. Um, right. Don't get me started. But anyway, um, yeah, so we've adapted. Um, it's honestly been the best thing for food trucks. And I seriously think that's why there's um, such a surge in the trend right now. It's because um, the community is starting to trust that, you know, there's some good food that comes off these trucks. I, I want them here. So um, obviously during the pandemic, I didn't want to in, in, um, in still having to have a minimum. I was so grateful just to be in business that I wouldn't turn anything down. So um, that being said, people are having these smaller parties now and starting to do these prepaid events. The word prepaid is very key. Um, that's what you want. But um, that being said, it's, it's been a really a great thing. And I think anyone that wants to pursue this, this is the time to do it because they're very wanted and needed and appreciated. So. Wow. Thank you, Chef. That was a, uh, no, that was, that was a lot to ask, but I, I really appreciate the, uh, the answer and the insight. So thank you. I'm uh, moving forward. Um, before we actually get to Chef Marshall, I know Chef Daniel, you had a, a demonstration that you wanted to, to, uh, to outline. So I would like to ask you very quickly, um, if you could kind of just explain the dish that, that you'll be dem demonstrating for us and then throughout the duration, um, you know, I, I make sure that we get back to you on it, but I'd like to ask Chef Marshall the, the, uh, the next question. So go ahead and, and just explain to us what, what you'll be demonstrating demonstrating today. Absolutely. So as uh, Chef Jenny and Chef Marshall have explained, everything is about speed, but you don't want to sacrifice quality. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it quick. One of the desserts that I do on my trailer actually is a Samoa cheesecake bar. Anybody who has ever gone into a grocery store or anything in America during Girl Scout cookie season get swamped. I'm a Samoa fan, so I developed this little uh, dish for my trailer, and the plate up is literally about 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, if you want to go ahead and have uh, Chef Marshall discuss what he's doing, I will go ahead and do this, but basically I just uh, set up where I already have my cheesecake there, and I'm going to dress it with the ingredients, and you'll see the finished product, and it goes out the window in no time. The food cost is incredible on it, something everyone needs to learn. Have good food costs. You can't go too fancy. You can't have a ton of ingredients, but if you have your food costs right and you get it out the window quick, this sells for three to four dollars depending on different ingredients or toppings that go on it but it's delicious Wonderful. so i'll go ahead and do that now for you certainly thank you it sounds delicious and even look delicious so thank you and we'll, we'll we'll make sure that we come back to you chef and explain that beautiful dish um and chef marshall um uh, and kind of asking the same thing with chef jenny what COVID-19, you know, protocols and measures um, may, that you probably had to imp implement in your curriculum for your students now, dealing with such an unprecedented time. Yeah, you know, um, COVID, COVID's changed us quite a bit. Uh, and I think it's changed all of us in, in some ways for the better, some ways for, for uh, uh, we'd like to throw it away and never think about it again. Um, one of the one of the key pieces, and I'm, I'm just going to reach over, is you know, everyone wears one of these. Um, you know, uh, the face mask has been a uh, an addition to what we already do. Um, you know, it, it was great listening to Chef Jenny and Chef Bloom about you know things that they've added, but the reality of our industry is we already have some of the best sanitation and hygiene practices of any other industry that's out there. Uh, and there are a lot of people who can naysay it. There are just as many cheerleaders out there on what we do. Um, so, you know, you culinary students, remember, wash your hands, follow that 20 second rule. Um, what we added is our students now wash their hands consistently every 30 minutes. Um, you wear gloves, change your gloves, change your gloves often. Uh, you know, and that's a that's a big thing. 
we've added a couple of extra layers to our students when we're when we're working with them. Uh, in addition to face masks, we have them wear face shields um, it, because of some of the CDC and WHO guidelines on spacing. Uh, if you have a barrier in between, and this is something uh, that that I preach to a lot of a lot of food truck owners, is if you put a face shield on, you actually have limit the exposure of um, any type of uh, water spread or you know spit or or a, a, the errant sneeze that happens even when you wear a face mask. Uh, that actually protects the wearer as well as the person you're working with. So all of our students and all of our chefs wear face masks, face shields, wash hands every 30 minutes, wear gloves where appropriate. Um, and that's a big thing. Now with the food truck, and, and this was something I didn't hear Chef Jenny talk about, um, and, and Chef Bloom didn't mention this either, is we do contactless payments. So um, a lot of tap on, a, on, on the payment or using uh, an app to pay us. Uh, whether it's a cash app or an ordering app, we'd rather do that uh, than actually take cash. Uh, we've gone a little, I'll call it cashless at this point. Um, now, I'm in a slightly different position than Chef Jenny and Chef Bloom. I don't have to go out and seek my business a lot of the times. I don't have to park my truck somewhere. Where we've started to use the truck, um, and this is this is us being very fortunate in what we do, we've partnered with a lot of organizations to uh, feed people who are struggling right now. So whether it's the Roots Festival, um, we spent three weeks feeding all the musicians in Northwest Arkansas uh, a couple of meals a week. Uh, and that was through one of our classes. And it was absolutely amazing, fed a few hundred people. Uh, we just fed 300 people down uh, at the Jones Center in Springdale. And that was just a drive through. We plated the food, bagged it up, handed it out the window, they drove off. Uh, no cost, we did, it, we did it as an event with some of our partners. And those become incredible learning aspects for students because yes, we're business and I'm, I, I will always go back to that. Chef Jenny needs to make money. Chef Bloom needs to make money. They've got to pay that, that monthly note on the truck or they've got to be able to afford propane and ingredients and pay employees. Uh, but Chef Jenny said it really, uh, she said it earlier and so did Chef Bloom. You'll notice these chefs, even in a time of pandemic, we're still going back and we're giving back to our communities because ultimately that is the greatest source of marketing that we're ever gonna have, uh, is being there, being present for the people who need help. And on food trucks, we get to be there, drive right to them. Right. We can pull up to that fire station, that police station. We can pull up to that high school, that business, yep. that community center. And if we're able to do it, and with some of those great partnerships, I saw a question come across about that whether it's a grocery store, a food bank, a major corporation, we can work with them, get ingredients for them, from them and feed people. So th there's a lot that we can do, Absolutely. but COVID has changed us uh, in thinking how to do it safely and how to, be, how, how to be present for our communities. Jeff, great points. Thank you for, for saying that. I think that's very important, um, especially for the, the younger generation to understand that as well. So safety and sanitation is extremely paramount, you know, across the board within our, our industry. I'm moving forward to, you know, Chef Daniel, if you wouldn't mind showing us the delicious dessert. I'm sure everybody's longing to see if they haven't already. And um, explain, you know, um, some of the ingredients that you that you put into that. And also, Chef, if you wouldn't mind giving us a quick tour of the, the truck that you're on. And then, um, Right after that, we'll transition uh, into a QA absolutely. and then finish that. Go ahead, Chef. So, simple cheesecake bar, if you can tell. Basically, it's a cookie crumb base cheesecake. Then I've got whipped cream that I make in the siphon. Throw some caramel, some toasted coconut on there, and a little bit of chocolate and call it a day. And that is in and out in no time which is really convenient. Now, if we go into uh, adding to what Chef Marshall said about sanitation, 
some people uh, may notice, obviously, I do have a beard. So I just wanted to add on to what he said for health aspect. I hey, actually sir, wear sir. a neck. Uh, Chef Daniel, yes. I'm sorry. Can you flip your camera? We're just looking at, there you go. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So I actually do wear um, a neck gaiter, I think is what they're called. So it prevents, uh, it's a mask, but it also covers my beard and that serves for multiple reasons or purposes as well with the health department. I just thought I'd add that on. But giving you a quick tour of the trailer, everyone keeps saying propane or remembering oil. Best thing about my business, I actually go and I get a full truck of wood I pay about $50, once again, thinking about cost, and that lasts me about two weeks. And then when I'm on board, a lot of it, one of my marketing is people know I'm the food truck that never runs out. I go as long as your event's going, others may close their window. I have the ability, if I'm running low on dough, I've got a 20 quart stand mixer on board. I always have a couple hundred pounds of flour. When I need dough on the fly, I can make it. As we're getting swamped, speed is always important. I have a dough sheeter right there. If we need to finish it, we do have regular old fashioned rollers, but once again, you wanna go quick. People need that pie. They need to get going about with their day. Now, in my case, a lot of what I use is cheese and vegetables. Plain and simple. One of my best friends, and I think uh, Jackie, Marshall, I, I would imagine everyone on here can agree, there's not a kitchen that doesn't have a RoboCo. <laughs> my food truck, believe it or not, I actually have two. Because one time an employee broke one of the pieces, and I made him shave cheese by hand, and he was horrified. He came back and he was like, let's get another one. I'll contribute. There's certain equipment that makes everything that much quicker and allows you to just keep rocking it out. And at the end of the day, as Marshall pointed out, Chef Jenny and I are both in it to make money. I go anywhere. Next week, I'm doing a benefit for the American Cancer Society. A portion of my profits will be donated, but while I am there, my goal is to just keep pushing as much pie out that window as I can. Chef Daniel, can we see your um, your oven? Is that is or the um, a little bit so, of what the space looks like on your truck? Sure, absolutely. So as I step out, all of my friends called me the pizza pirate because of the beard, so I ran with it. So as you look, that's my custom flag. Let's times roll now, as I tell other food trucks are not set up like mine mine is unique in that as you come up to the window yes you can see the menu and everything but if it's cold out I allow people to step up onto this platform and I'll let them come right up to the oven and warm their hands obviously I'm watching them but at the same time Food brings people together. And right now the oven isn't going. It takes about three hours to get up to temperature. So I don't have it quite there yet. I'll uh, be lighting it in a little while, but basically this oven is 3000 pounds of solid good food coming out. It, basically I know that if I do a private party, it's great. I can't tell you how many people call me when you talk about marketing. The next week, I'll have a friend call me and say, I just saw somebody else with your oven. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they go, well, you let them get up there and pretend they were making their pie. And that's their Facebook profile picture now. And I, was just like, I was like, of course it is. Of course it is. And they'll joke with me. Oh, you've got child labor going now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they'll say, there's a little kid in front of your oven. I'm like, no, they were just warm in their hand. But the whole point for me with my trailer 
was not to be pretentious. I wanted people to feel like it was fun. When I'm going down the road and they see a pirate flag and the fun logos and everything, they know this is just going to be simple and fun. It's not meant to be, you know, a fine dining. Even though the quality is there, it's still going to be down to earth, good home cooking. Seth, thank you. Uh, beautiful truck. Thank you so much um, for, for showing everyone that. Um, unfortunately, um, because of the time constraints, I know we can't get to everybody's questions. So um, I would just ask all the panelists to give their final thoughts, maybe advice for the young chefs that are viewing, um, you know, some things that, that maybe you would like to, to share that, you know, we haven't discussed yet. Um, and also for anybody viewing, um, if the panelists wouldn't mind uh, sharing their email or contact information or social media links. Um, so for the students or for the, or the viewers watching, they can, um, you know, ask those questions that, that we haven't gotten to in this presentation. So starting with Chef Jenny, um, any final remarks, advice, anything that you'd like to say? And then we'll go from Chef Marshall and then I will end with Chef Bloom. Um, well, first of all, thank you again for having me. Um, there's just so much more we could talk about. I mean, I have, I mean, a list of things, but um, just kind of to those of you that, that, that want to get started in a truck, um, make sure you have a good support system. First of all, um, I'm just going to give you a few key things. Um, you're going to get out of what you invest in, whether it's a support system, whether it's the stove you choose, whether it's the truck you choose choose quality things because in the long run they all get a lot of wear and tear and um, you're going to get what you pay for. So that and then also make sure you have enough money to cover yourself for a full 12 months when you get this going because the mistakes you make are going to cost money and you need to be able to take care of yourself. So the, unless you have some things in order and you're in that position to do so, you might want to wait. It's There's a lot of hidden costs um, but it's so worth the work. It is not, I get on my truck and five hours later, I get off and I'm all done. It is not that by any means. It is so much work. Um, so anyway, but not to be discouraging. Um, you learn and you overcome. And I, I know that if you really have a passion for it, um, you can do it. So that's just me. I figured this out way too late in life, but good luck to each of you. And please email me or message me if you have any questions at all, because I love, um, teaching and I love students and anyone that's interested in this I, I'm just transparent I'm just me I'm no pride so um, thank you again Chef Jenny thank you for your insight and advice it was a pleasure thank you so much Chef Marshall um, any any remarks chef um, a ton of remarks, Chef, but um, things to share. One, I do want to say hello to uh, Chef Jessica. Chef Jessica is one of my former students who's now a culinary instructor in Mass. So hello, hello to all your students. Um, the biggest piece of advice that I would say about this is, um, and, and Chef Jenny kind of touched on it a little bit there, was have a plan and have people behind you that are going to stand with you. Because, you know, it's a business and um, know your business, know what you want to do, be firm in your decisions and uh, but be flexible to learn and understand. You don't always have all the answers and that's OK. Have strong mentors who are willing to sit down with you and share their most precious gift, which is their time and their knowledge. And listen, really, truly listen. Don't think about answering their questions. Listen to what they have to say to you and soak that in. And for those of you who are really, really interested in going to start this truck, gain your culinary knowledge. That's incredibly important. But the biggest piece of advice I'm going to have for you is learn about business. Mm -hmm. Go get a business degree. Go take business classes read every business book that there is out there because if you don't understand what food cost is if you don't if you can't uh, figure out what a PL is or how to order don't be scared of technology you won't be successful that's really how how you survive uh, in this business whether it's brick and mortar or it's on a food truck know the business side of it 
Uh, if you want to find out more about Brightwater or about me, and the easiest way to get in touch with me is to go onto our website, and that's brightwater.edu or brightwater.org. Uh, and you can check us out if you send an email uh, through the contact us, it'll come down to me and I will respond right back to you. Look forward to hearing from you guys and thank you so much. Shook Marshall, thank you so much for your advice. It was uh, very, very fruitful. Thank you so much. And finally, Chef Daniel, um, if any advice for the younger, younger chefs and some things that, that you might foresee moving forward? Well, I want to first say thank you so much for having me on as a panelist. And as far as advice goes, there are a few things I'll leave you with. Always be humble. You don't know who you're going to be meeting. You don't know what uh, opportunities it might present. So network like crazy. For me, networking over the years has opened so many doors. I volunteered at any opportunity. One time it was for Chef Alan Saucer. That led to a consultant job at a five diamond resort in the Caribbean. Always be willing to help anyone. That's going to be key in growing. And then, you know, aside from networking, definitely learn as much as you can. I learned at the Ritz Carlton and other corporations I worked for that the guy that could only work the grill or only saute when it was time for cuts, that was the guy that wasn't necessarily needed. And so I learned every position in every restaurant I worked at. And it came in handy when I got my own business because now, yes, I primarily do the pizza, but with my degree from the Culinary Institute of America, I didn't just forget everything else I learned. I do weddings, I do private chef work from the trailer and somebody will say can you come up with this for me can you come up with that and because I had that broad knowledge base I'm able to do it don't pigeonhole yourself always learn don't think that you're the best at something when you think you know the most there is to know that's when you have an issue my pizza can always improve always try to improve. That's what I'll leave you with. Chef Daniel, thank you so much. And um, you brought up an interesting point about networking. And uh, I think it, it reminds me of that saying, you know, your network reflects your net worth. So, you know, to any of the, the younger chefs here, you know, uh, I'm sure every chef can agree um, that is on this panel and even, you know, Jackie on the, on the back end, um, that, you know, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody else in this industry, <laughs> regardless of, of where it is or who it is or anything like that. So, you know, use your networks, use your context, don't be afraid to reach out and, you know, truly, you know, there is no limit beside yourself. So um, on behalf of, you know, ACF and the ACF Young Chefs Club and myself as, as national president, I just want to thank every panelist um, and uh, thank you so much for, for sharing your advice with, with us and, uh, and uh, Massachusetts Pro Start. Um, it was an honor to be a moderator and to help facilitate this tremendous presentation. So um, it was, um, I, I hope to, you know, have a, a fruitful and and long lasting relationship with all of you. And if I can be of any assistance and resource to any of you, please feel free to reach out. So we really appreciate it. I wish you all a great uh, year, a very healthy year, and uh, uh, as well as a, a successful year. And uh, at this time, I'd like to pass it back to Jackie for our ending remarks. They could reach out to me too. Oh, <laughs> well, I said that well, is, absolutely. Well, we'll put all the uh, links in the follow up email, but I have to tell you, I am starving now thinking about. <laughs> this food. Um, but a, a huge virtual round of applause as we uh, thank Chef Ashton and all of our panelists for being here. And, you know, based on the fact that we didn't get to all of the questions and the feedback that we're receiving so far, I think we have to continue this conversation about food trucks and get more into the business and the menu development and all of those great questions that everyone was talking about. So we heard you um, and we will keep offering some great content for young chefs. We have our next Young Chefs webinar on February 11th, which will be um, in collaboration with New Hampshire Pro Start. All of you are invited. We'll have a focus on vegan cuisine with Chef Keith Saracen. We are also happy to celebrate Black History Month uh, and with a great presentation with Chef Kenyatta Ashford on February 23rd, featuring West African cuisine. 
And we are also working on a very special project um, in collaboration with Massachusetts ProStart as well um, to discuss food in space with NASA. So for more inspiration and culinary news and to register for upcoming webinars, please visit our site, wearechefs.com and acfchefs.org. And again, a very special thank you to American Lamb Board for um, being our sponsor for today. So on behalf of the ACF National Office, thank you, Massachusetts Pro Start, for the opportunity. Thank you all for joining in today. We hope to see you real soon. And if you're ever in Arkansas or Texas or Florida, make sure that you patronize some of these great food truck chefs. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.